everyone. So as many of you know, the Regents exams are a little more than a month away. So today I'm going to be going over the notes for Biology Regents in question and answer format. And I'm going to be going up to the body system. So I'll be making a sequel once we get to that. But this will be a good, good long unit. So let's begin. What are the steps of the scientific method? One, observation, which helps you decide what to investigate. Two, hypothesis. Three, controlled experiment. Four, record and analyze results. Five, conclusion. And six, theory. What is a controlled experiment? An experiment that has one group under conditions that will generate a known outcome, and a second group that has one variable that will result in an unknown outcome. Outcome. <laughs> what are the manipulated variables also known as? Independent variable. What is a manipulated variable? Where does it go on the graph? So it's like on the x or the y-axis. So the variable that has been tested or deliberately changed, and it goes on the x-axis. What is a responding variable? A dependent variable. Uh, what is a responding variable? Does it go on the x or y-axis? So the responding variable is a variable that is observed for changes and it's on the y-axis. What are three ways to increase the validity of an experiment? One, have a large sample size. Two, you have to be able to repeat it. Three, clear, concise procedure provided. What are the eight characteristics of life? One, cellular organization, or made of cells. Two, reproduction. Three, heredity, which means you pass down your DNA. Four, growth and development. Five, metabolism, which means that you can obtain and use materials and energy in order to carry out all cellular processes. Six, response to environment. Seven, homeostasis, which is maintaining an internal, stable, living environment. And eight is evolution. Name the levels of classification in biology from largest to smallest. Molecules, cells, tissues, organs, organ systems, organisms, population, community, ecosystem, and biosphere. What are two major types of microorganisms? Um, light, sorry, what are two major types of microscopes? <laughs> light microscope and electron mi microscopes. What is a monocular light microscope? A microscope with only one eyepiece. What is a compound light microscope? A microscope with more than one lens. What is a binocular light microscope? A microscope with two eyepieces. What is a dissecting light microscope? A microscope that is 3D with lots of room between the stage and projection lens. Describe a transmission electron microscope. It lets you see the inside of stuff. Describe a scanning electron microscope. It lets you see the surface of stuff. What is an atom? The basic unit of matter. What are atoms made out of? Protons, neutrons, and electrons. What is the charge of protons? Positive. What is the charge of neutrons? None, they are neutral. What is the charge of electrons? Electrons are negative. What is a molecule? A unit of two or more atoms. What does a molecule bond do? It holds two atoms together. What is the sharing of electrons within a molecule called? A covalent bond. How do molecular bonds relate to energy? Energy is needed to make the bond, and energy is released when the bond is broken. What is polarity? When a molecule share electrons unequally. Polar molecules dissolve in blank substances. Polar. What is an organic molecule? A molecule that contains both carbon and hydrogen atoms. What is an inorganic molecule? A molecule that does not contain both carbon and hydrogen atoms together. What four elements make up over 99% of your body? Carbon, which is C, hydrogen, which is H, oxygen, which is O, and nitrogen, which is N. What are the four major groups of organic macromolecules found in living things? Carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. What is the function of carbohydrates? 
they're the primary source of energy and they have some structural functions as well. What are carbs composed of? Carbon and hydrogen bonds. Car sorry, carbon and hy hydrogen and oxygen. So carbs, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. Okay. What are three types of um, of um, of um, carbs? What are three types of carbohydrates? Uh, one, monosaccharides. Two, disaccharides. And three, polysaccharides. What are monosaccharides? Simple sugars and the monomer of carbs. What is the molecular formula of monosaccharides? C6H12O6. What are some examples of monosaccharides? Glucose and fructose. What are some examples of disaccharides? Sucralose, lactose, and maltose. What are, sorry, how are polypeptides formed? So polypeptides are formed by joining many glucose molecules. What are the types of polysaccharides? Starch, glycerin, cellulose, and chitin. What is starch? The storage form of glucose in plants. What is glycerin? The storage form of glucose in animal, muscle, and liver cells. What is cellulose? It's found in plant cell walls and it's ingestible by animals. It is not ingestible by animals. Describe chitin. It's found in the exoskeleton of insects. What are the functions of lipids? Long-term stored energy, insulation, protection, and the cell membrane. What are lipids composed of? Carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. What are the building blocks of lipids? Glycerin and three fatty acids. What are the subcategories of lipids? Fats, oils, and other. What do you, where do you get fat from? Eating animals, for the most part. What state um, is fat in at room temperature? Solid. What type of fatty acids do fats contain? Salt water fatty acids. What can eating fats lead to? Cholesterol formation. What are some examples of fats? Lard, slobber, and butter. What are oils mostly found in? Plants. What state are oils at room temperature? Liquid. Um, do they lead to cholesterol formation? No. What type of fatty acids um, do they have? Unsaturated, no salt. What are some examples of oils? Corn, sunflower, and peanut oil. What are some examples of other lipids? Cholesterol, steroids, wax, and phospholipids. What's the function of nucleic acids? They store and transmit genetic information, control cell activities, and direct formation of proteins. What are nucleic acids composed of? Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and phosphorus. What are the building blocks of nucleic acids? Nucleotides. What are two types of nucleic acids? DNA, which is deoxyribonucleic acid, and RNA, which is ribonucleic acid. What is a form, what is a function of proteins? One, structural, so there are structural molecules in the cell membrane, hair and finger cells, and connective tissue. Some are enzymes which aid chemical reactions. What is the composition of proteins? Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. What are the building blocks of proteins? Amino acids. Protein function depends on their shape. What can change the shape of a protein? High temperature and changes in pH level. And low temperature will just slow it down. It doesn't stop it from working. What are enzymes? They're organic catalysts. And they are proteins that aid in chemical activation energy, sorry, in lowering the activation energy and changing the rate of reaction. What is activation energy? Amount of energy required to start a chemical reaction. What is activation energy usually in the form of? Heat. What is pH? The measure of acidity or basicity of, an, of a solution from 1 to 14. 1 is acidic and 14 is basic. How is pH level man ma measured? <laughs> Testing for the H plus ions of a solution. What is ecology? The study of the interactions and interrelations between living things and their environment. 
Name the organization of ecology from smallest to largest. Species, population, community, habitat, ecosystem, biome, and biosphere. What is a species? Organisms with similar characteristics that can reproduce successfully and produce fertile offspring. What is population? All members of one species in an area. What is community? All the populations, aka living things, in an area. What is habitat? Where you live. What is an ecosystem? All living things in a particular place. The community combined with the habitat. What is a biome? Interacting ecosystems in a large geographic area. What is a biosphere? Anywhere life exists on Earth. What are autotrophs slash producers? Organisms that make their own food. What is photosynthesis? Using the sun to make your own food. What is chemosynthesis? Using chemicals from the sun, from your surrounding environment to make your own food. What are heterotrophs, aka consumers? Organisms that need to obtain food from another source. What are herbivores? Plant eaters. What are omnivores? Plant and meat eaters. What are carnivores? Meat eaters. What are decomposers slash saprobites? Organisms that decay, recycle materials back into the soil. What are two examples of decomposers? Bacteria and fungi. What are predators? Organisms that hunt and kill prey. What is a food chain? The path of energy transfer. What direction does energy flow? The sun, to the producer, to the primary consumer, to the secondary consumer. What is a food web? A complex network of food chains in an ecosystem. What is a trophic level? Organisms where energy sources are the same number of steps away from the sun. What is a 10% rule? Only 10% of energy taken in is available to the next consumer. So energy is not recycled. You need to know that. So what is the rest lost to? Heat and metabolism. What is a limiting nutrient? A nutrient that is scarce or cycles slowly. What does a limiting nutrient need it to do? So it limits the primary productivity of producers. What happens if there's a large input of a limiting nutrient on an ecosystem? The producers will undergo an increase in number. What are ecosystems determined by? Limiting factors, habitat, and niche. What are living limiting factors? Factors that determine what type of species may live in a given area. What is a niche? The role or job of an organism in its ecosystem. Describe the competitive exclusion principle. No two species can occupy the same niche at the same habitat at the same time. What is symbiosis? A close, long-term association between two or more species. What is a parasitism? Um, one, one organism benefits and the other is harmed. What is mutualism? Two organisms live together for the benefit of both. What is an example of mutualism? Uh, lichen, which is algae plus fungus, and nitrogen fixing bacteria plus the root of the plant. What is commensalism? When one organism help, is helped by the relationship and the other one is not affected. What is ecological succession? The um, regular progression of species replacement in a developing ecosystem. Describe primary succession. Uh, it is on land where nothing has grown before and there is no soil. It begins with a pioneer species that prepares the area for other life forms. Describe secondary succession. There has been and there has been previous growth and it gradually returns to its original to its original condition. Describe a climax community. It's a stable ecosystem. Succession has stopped and it can be altered by some events. What usually happens to an altered ecosystem? It can usually recover through gradual changes back to a point of long-term stability. What is eutrophication? The pollution and eventual destruction of a lake. What is carrying capacity? The number of individuals an ecosystem can support at a given time. What is a cell? The most basic unit of life. The smallest structure that is capable of carrying out all the basic life processes. Who made high power lenses and observed small things in pond water in the mid 1600s? Anton von Leeuwenhoek. Who observed cork under compound microscopes and named the box-like the box structures that he saw cells? 
Robert Hooke, who theorized that all plants are made of cells. Matthias Glyden, who th theorized that all animals are made of cells. Theodore Schwann, who theorized that cells arise from pre-existing cells. Rudolf Virchow, describe the cell theory. One, all organisms are composed of cells. Two, all cells carry out the same basic life processes and are basically similar in structure. Three, new cells come from pre-existing cells. Four, an organism becomes ill because of cell malfunction. What are two major types of cells? Prokaryotic and eukaryotic. Describe eukaryotic, sorry, describe prokaryotic cells. So they are the simplest of all cell types. They're usually the smallest and it has a cell membrane, but not other membrane bound organelles. And DNA, DNA is not found in the nucleus, it's just free, free floating. Describe eukaryotic cells. They are complex and they contain membrane bound organelles. Describe the cell membrane. It's a selectively permeable membrane that controls what materials can and cannot exit the, enter and exit the cell. Is the cell membrane present in all cells? Yes, it's in all of them. Describe the chytoplasm. So it's a liquid material in the cell that contains enzymes and other chemicals that cause life functions to occur. Describe the nucleus. It controls cellular activity and is known as the cell's control center. Is the nucleus in all cells? No, just, it's just in all eukaryotic cells. What is a nuclear membrane slash envelope? It's a double membrane with pores. Describe the nucleolus, a dense area of DNA where ribosome synthesis takes place. Describe chromosomes. They contain genetic information and they are strands of DNA with sections known as genes. Describe ribosomes. They're the site of, photo of protein synthesis and they are attached to the endoplasmic reticulum and, or they're free floating. Are ribosomes found in all cells? Yes. Describe the rough endoplasmic reticulum, which is known as the RER. So they are membrane bound canals with ribosomes um, on their outer surface. They are used for internal transport and synthesis of proteins that, we, well, that will be secreted from the cell. Describe the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. So they are membrane bound canal with no ribosomes on the outer surface. They're used for internal transport and they are the site of lipid synthesis. Is the endoplasmic reticulum found in all cells? No. Describe the Golgi apparatus. It looks like a stack of flattened pancakes and it pr processes and packages all the cell products in a membrane bound sacs for secretion from the cell. So it secretes what you need to get out. Is the Golgi apparatus found in all cells? No, just in all eukaryotic cells. Describe lysosomes. The, so they are membrane bound sacs containing strong digestive enzymes. They break down, worn out all parts and they aid in digestion of food. Are lysosomes found in all cells? No, but they are in all eukaryotic cells. Describe the vacuoles. So they are membrane bound sacs for storage of materials. Are vacuoles found in all cells? No, just in all the eukaryotic cells. Describe the food vacuole. Stores food. Describe the contractile vacuole. Pumps out water to maintain homeostasis. Describe the large central vacuole. It is the storage area for, um, for, it's for water in the center of plant cells. It's in plant cells only and it helps maintain the cell's shape. Describe the mitochondria the powerhouse of the cell, and the site of aerobic cellular respiration. Is the mitochondria in all cells? No, but it is in all eukaryotic cells. Describe the chloroplast. It contains a pigment chlorophyll. This is the site of photosynthesis, and it is in plant cells and some protists. Describe chytoskeleton. It's um, microfilaments and microtubules that act like the muscles and bones and they give the cell shape and allow for movement. Describe centrioles. So they are involved in cell division in animal cells. Describe the cell wall. So it's a, it's a rigid layer of cellulose and it's porous to allow materials to enter and leave the cell. It provides cellular support and protection 
and it is only in plant cells. What is the function of receptor proteins? So, when it encounters an appropriate molecule, it transmits a signal into the cell. What is the purpose of cell surface markers? Identify what type of cell it is. What is the function of channel proteins? They allow substances that cannot pass through the membrane to enter the cell. Describe passive transport. It does not require energy, and molecules move down a concentration gradient. The molecules are usually small. What is a concentration gradient? So it's the boundary between two concentrations. It is usually the cell membrane in living things. Describe diffusion. So it's the movement of molecules from an area where they're in high concentration to an area where they're in low concentration. And it goes with the concentration gradient. Describe equilibrium. So it's a condition where there's no longer a high concentration of a substance. The concentration is equal throughout the system. Describe osmosis. So it's the diffusion of water and the movement of water from an area of high to low concentration and the movement of water from an area of low solid concentration to an area of high solid concentration. What is solid? A material that is dissolved. What is solvent? A material that can dissolve another material. Describe a hypotonic solution. A solution that has less dissolved solid than the cell. This means that there is a higher concentration of water outside the cell. What direction will water flow in, in a hypotonic solution? Into the, cell, into the cell. Picture a hypotonic solution. I'll show an image up there. Describe a hypertonic solution. A solution has more dissolved solid than the cell. That means that there is a lower concentration of water outside the cell. What direction will water flow in a hypotonic, sorry, in a hypertonic solution? Hopefully we'll show that. So picture a hypertonic solution. Hopefully you'll show that. Describe isotonic solution. Equal concentrations of water inside and outside of the cell, and there's no net movement of water. Picture an isotonic solution. What is plasmolysis? So that's when the chitoplasm shrinks. What is chitolysis? That's the bursting of the cell membrane. What is facilitated diffusion slash transport? So it moves through specific protein channels. It goes from high to low concentration, and it goes against the gradient. Describe active transport. So it requires the use of energy. It may involve movement against the concentration gradient, and sometimes the materials are too big to enter the cell passively. Describe the sodium-potassium pump. So energy is used to pump sodium ions out of the cell and potassium ions into the cell against the concentration gradient. What is endocytosis? The process by which a cell brings in materials too big to bring in by diffusion. What is pinocytosis? A type of endocytosis where the cell makes an indentation in its membrane to bring substances in. What is phagocytosis? A type of endocytosis where a cell engulfs a substance by forming extensions, aka pseudopods, of its membrane. What is exocytosis? A process by which a cell releases substances from the cell using energy. What are two reasons, that, two reasons why one might use exocytosis? Materials are too big to release by diffusion, and getting rid of water slash waste against a concentration gradient. What does ATP stand for? Adenosine triphosphate. What are the three parts of ATP? Adenine, ribose, and three phosphate groups. Where is energy found in ATP? The bonds that attach three phosphate groups to the molecules. What does ADP stand for? Adenosine diphosphate. How does ADP differ from ATP? ADP has only two phosphate groups. Picture the ATP to ADP cycle. Put something up there. Does ATP store or transfer energy? It only transfers energy. What is a chemical equation for photosynthesis? C sorry, 6CO2 plus 6H2O plus light changes to C6H12O6 plus 6O2. Where do plants get CO2? Stomates, which are small pores at the bottom of the leaf where water vapor and oxy oxygen also go out. How do plants get water? Don't overthink this. 
roots. What are pigments? So those are special molecules in cells of plants that absorb different wavelengths of light. Describe chlorophyll A and B. So they absorb light energy in red and blue, reflect green, and they are most abundant in pigments in the leaf of a green plant. Describe carotene. So they absorb blue and green and reflect orange and red. Describe xanophyll. So they reflect yellow light and they absorb all the other colors. Describe what factors affect photosynthesis. Amount of water available, temperature, and intensity of sunlight. Describe cellular respiration. The process that releases energy in a controlled manner by breaking down food molecules. This energy is used in ATP. Who practices cellular respiration? All living things. What are two types of respiration? Anaerobic and aerobic. Describe anaerobic respiration. It occurs in organisms with no access to oxygen. It is also known as fermentation. It's in the chytoplasm and it results in pyruvic acid and is, is the splitting of sugar. When is lactic acid fermentation used? So it's used in your muscles during strenuous exercise. It's in microtubules that, move, that make yogurt, sour cream, and um, sauerkraut. What is the equation for lactic acid fermentation? C6H12O6, so that's glucose, changes to 2 ATP plus 2 lactic acid. Where does alcoholic fermentation occur? In yeast cells. What is the equation for alcoholic fermentation? C6H12O6 changes to 2 ATP plus CO2 plus alcohol. Where does aerobic respiration occur? In organisms that possess the correct enzymes and when oxygen is available. What is the equation for aerobic respiration? C6H12O6 plus 6 O2 plus, sorry, changes to 6CO2 plus 6H2O plus 36 ATP. So you gotta let more ATP out of that. Describe mitotic cell division. It is asexual. One cell divides into two cells. Chromosome number remains the same and daughter cells are identical. What is mitosis? Division of the nucleus. What are the two basic steps of mitosis? One, Chromosomes are replicated. Two, chromosomes are separated. Describe chromatin. The DNA strands that are long, spindly, and intertwined. Individual chromosomes are not visible and they are found in non-dividing cells. Picture chromatin. That's not there. Describe chromosomes. So they are DNA strands that have shortened or, inter or thickened by coiling tightly around a protein. They are visible in the cell and they are found in actively dividing cells. Picture a chromosome. Describe a double-stranded chromosome. Two identical strands of DNA are held together at a centromere, and they are found in the early stages of mitosis. What is a chromatid? An individual strand of DNA and a double-stranded chromosomes. What name? Name the two phase. Name the phases of a cell cycle. Interphase, prophase. Metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and interphase again. Describe interphase. So that's the resting stage. It's the longest. DNA is in the form of chromatin, and the centrosome is located outside the nucleus. What marks the end of interphase? Replication of DNA. Describe prophase. So mitosis officially begins. Double-stranded chromosomes appear. The nucleus disappears. Nuclear membrane breaks down, the centrosome breaks and centrioles travel to the poles, and spindle fibers begin to form. Picture prophase. Describe metaphase. Double-stranded chromosomes line up across the middle of the cell. Spindle fibers attach to the centromere. Picture metaphase. Describe anaphase. So spindle fibers shorten, pulling double-stranded chromosomes apart. One complete set of chromosomes is um, led to each end of the cell. Picture anaphase. Describe telophase. So two nuclei form, two nucleoli form, the centrioles duplicate, and um, chitokinesis occurs. So in animal cells, the cell membrane pinches in, 
and in plant cells, the cell plate forms between the nuclei. What is chitokinesis? Chitoplasmic division. Picture telophase. What are cyclins? Proteins that regulate the timing of the cell plate, of the cell cycle. Proteins that regulate the timing of the cell cycle. So describe binary fission. So one organism divides into two equal parts and it's in bacteria. Describe vegetative propagation. Taking part of a plant to grow a genetically identical plant. What is meiosis? Meiosis. So that's a type of nucleic division where the chromosome behavior is halved because the nucleus divides twice. It results in the formation of gametes. What are gametes? So they are sex cells. What are the two main stages of meiosis? Meiosis one and meiosis two. Describe what happens in meiosis one. So homol homologous chromosomes pair up forming tetrads in a stage known as synapses. Crossing over may take place, and the tetras are separated into two cells in a process known as disjunction. What happens in meiosis 2? The two daughter cells from meiosis 1 are divided without any chromosomal replication, so it results in four haploid cells, aka gametes. What is gametogenesis? The formation of gametes for the process of meiosis. Describe spermogenesis. Four sperm are formed. Describe oogenesis. One egg and three polar bodies that don't do anything are formed. How do meiosis and mitosis compare and contrast? So mitosis divides once, while meiosis divides twice. Mitosis produces two cells identical to the parent, and meiosis produces four cells with half the number of chromosomes. Mitosis is involved in asexual reproduction, and meiosis is involved in sexual reproduction. Mitosis is in your body cells, and meiosis is in gametes. Both of these types replicate the DNA and go through prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. What is gene linkage? So that's when genes for two different traits are on the same chromosome and are inherited together. Who is the father of modern genetics? Gregor Mendel. How many alleles does an individual have for one trait? Two and one is from your mother and one is from your father. So mom plus dad equals two. What is a genotype? Your genetic makeup. What is a phenotype? Your physical characteristics as a result of your genetic makeup. What are three possible genotypes in complete dominance? So we have capital letter, capital letter, which is homologous, hom homozygous dominant. So capital T, capital T basically. And then you can get capital letter, lowercase letter, so heterozygous hybrid. Or you can have lowercase letter, lowercase letter, which is homozygous recessive. What are Mendel's three laws? So we have law of dominance, law of segregation, and law of independent assortment. Describe the law of dominance. Some traits are dominant, and in individuals that are heterozygous, only the dominant trait is shown. The hidden trait is recessive. Describe the law of segregation. So the two alleles will separate during meiosis. Each gamete gets only one copy. Describe the law of independent assortment. Genes for different traits are separated and distributed to gametes independently of one another, as long as they are on different chromosomes. What is a monohybrid cross? So that's when both parents are hybrid for the trait. So capital letter, lowercase letter, times capital letter, lowercase letter. So what is a test cross? A cross used to determine the, the genotype of a dominant phenotype. How do you do a test cross? Dominant phenotype times recessive phenotype, or dominant phenotype, so you can do it like capital letter, capital letter, times lowercase letter, lowercase letter, and capital letter times, capital letter, lowercase letter, times capital, times lowercase, lowercase letter. Here, you guys can see. So what are three types of dominance? Complete dominance, which is Mendel's dominance, co-dominance, and incomplete dominance. Describe co-dominance. So both, straight, both traits are shown equally. Two different capital letters are used. So an example of this is roan cattle, which has red and white hair. So the cattle isn't pink when you combine them. It has little red hairs and little white hair. So they're both shown. Describe incomplete dominance. So it results in the blending of traits. 
Two different capital letters are used, and an example of this is the color of flowers. Um, with which um, characteristics that have with characteristics that have more than two different alleles, how many alleles does one person have? Two. One from your mother, one from your father. So what they're saying is that even if you're talking blood type where there are a lot of possible alleles, you only have two. You're not going to have three alleles because you can. Because you get one from your mother, one from your father. That's what you need to know. So what are the possible alleles for blood type? Um, A, B, or O. What are the possible blood types? So that's your phenotype of those. So you have type A, which is made up of AA and AO. Type B, which is BB and BO. Type AB, which is AB. And type O, which is OO. What chromosomes do females have? XX. What chromosomes do men have? XY. On which chromosome do most sex-linked traits go on? The X chromosome, because it is bigger and it has more genes than the Y. Are most sex chromosome crosses dominant or recessive? Recessive. Show a cross between a man with hemophilia and a woman who is not hemophiliac but is a carrier. So it should look something like this. So you got the woman and she has X with a capital H for, hem for no hemophilia and X with a lowercase h and that means you have carrying something for hemophilia and then the man has X little h so he has hemophilia and Y. So their kids, their daughter has a 50% chance of being a he hemophiliac and 50% chance of being a carrier but not having symptoms herself. The son has a 50% chance of being hemophiliac and a 50% chance of not having anything. So what are polygenic traits? Traits are controlled by two or more genes. This means that multiple combinations of alleles have to work together. What is DNA made out of? Deoxyribose sugar, phosphate group. What is DNA made of? Deoxyribose sugar, phosphate group, and nitrogen base. Picture DNA. Yeah, picture what that looks like. So what are the possible bases of DNA? Adenine, thymine, guanine, and chitosine. Who is credited with making the model of DNA? Watson and Crick. Who actually developed it? Rosalind Franklin. Rosalind Franklin. So what does a model of DNA look like? A double helix, which is a twisted ladder. What do, what is on the sides of the, of the ladder? Alternating sugar and phosphate groups. What is on the rungs of the ladder? Nitrogen base pairs. What holds the two sides of the ladder together? Hydrogen bonds between the bases. Describe Chargoff's base pairing rule. Adenine goes with thymine, and guanine goes with chitosine. What is the function of DNA? Contains the genetic information in a nucleotide sequence, and the DNA code determines the order of amino acids in a protein. What is a chromosome? A DNA wrapped around a histone, which is a protein. What are genes? Segments of DNA, the code for proteins. What is DNA replication? Making a copy of DNA. When is DNA replicated? At uh, the end of interphase, before mitosis and meiosis. List the steps of DNA replication. One, enzymes unzip the DNA by breaking down the H bonds. Two, an enzyme called DNA polyamorase moves along the single strand of DNA and matches up DNA nucleotides with the original nucleotides following the base pairing rule. What are the possible nitrogen bases for RNA? Adenine, uracil, Guanine and and uh, chitosine. What are the bases? What bases go with which? So adenine goes with aerosol and guanine goes with chitosine. What are the two major ways that RNA differs from DNA? So RNA is single stranded and it can leave the nucleus. Also, it has um, uracil, so that's something different. So what process is messenger RNA formed by? Transcription. What is the function of mRNA? Copies and carries messages from the DNA and the nucleus to the ribosome. What is the transfer RNA involved in? Translation. What is the purpose of tRNA? Carries amino acids to the proper place in the protein. What is ribosomal RNA? A major component of the ribosome. What are the steps of protein synthesis? Transcription, pr translation. What is transcription? The copying of DNA code into a molecule of mRNA. What happens in transcription? 
One, a specific gene in the DNA molecule unzips with the help of special enzymes. Two, individual RNA nucleotides match up to the DNA nucleotides following the base pairing rule. Three, newly formed mRNA molecule leaves the nucleus and attaches to the ribosome. What is an mRNA codon? A group of three nucleotides on mRNA. What happens in translation? The genetic code on mRNA strand is changed into a protein. So the tRNA, or anticodon, with an amino acid matches up to an mRNA codon. As ribosomes move up the mRNA, more tRNA molecules bring in more amino acids to build the protein. A stop codon is reached, translation ends, and a new protein is formed. What is a mutation? A change in the genetic sequence of a gene or an entire chromosome. What is a genetic mutation? A change in the nucleotide sequence. What are two examples of gene mutations? Point mutation and frame shift mutation. Describe point mutation. It's caused by base substitution and it may or may not affect one amino acid in, in the protein. Describe frame shift mutation. So it's caused by insertion or deletion of a, of a nucleotide. It results in many amino acids being changed. Describe sickle cell anemia. One nucleotide in the gene that codes for the hemoglobin protein is switched. One amino acid out of the 600 is switched as a result, and the symptoms include uh, frequent blood clots that can be deadly. Describe phenyl phenylketonuria. So it results from a gene mutation that prevents the body from breaking down the amino acid phenylglylanine. If not diagnosed at birth, the child experiences mental disability and brain damage. Describe cystic fibrosis. It results from a gene mutation that causes a thick mutation, thick mucus to form in the lungs. It makes breathing difficult and the average lifespan is in the mid-30s. Describe Tay-Sachs disease. So it results from a gene mutation that, ca that causes the buildup of fatty material in the brain. It usually makes the kids who have it die at about three or four years old. How many chromosomes do humans usually have? 46. What are autosomes? Your chromosomes that are not sex chromosomes. So everyone except for those two. What is a karyotype? So this is a picture of a person's chromosomes arranged in homologous pairs according to size. It allows doctors to see any chromosomal mutations. What are chromosomal mutations? Having too many or too few chromosomes. What, um, what may chromosomal mutations be caused by? Non-disjunction during meiosis, which means improper separation of chromosomes. Most non-disjunctions are do, 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 fatal. I said that weird. Okay, so what are two non-fatal chromosomal mutations in humans? Down syndrome and Klinefelder's. Describe Down syndrome. So an individual has an extra 31st chromosome. Describe Klinefelder's syndrome. A male has a Y chromosome along with two or more X chromosomes. What is an impact of a mutation in body, not sex cells? So it only damages that particular individual and it cannot be passed on to the offspring. So if it's just in any of my other chromosomes besides the sex ones, then only I will be affected, not my kids, basically. I mean, they'd be affected by me having it, but anyway. So, um, describe the impact of mutations on gametes. It can be passed on to your offspring, and it affects yourself as well. So gametes is, you know, our sex cells, so, yeah. So what are mutagenic agents? Things that can cause mutations. What is a genome? All the genes in a particular species. What is a gene, what is genetic engineering? Adding desired traits into an organism's genome. What is plasmid? So that's a small circular piece of DNA found in bacteria. List of steps in recombinant DNA techniques. One, special enzymes cut out the gene from the DNA, leaving sticky ends and cut open the plasmid. Two, the cut pieces of DNA are added to the plasmid. This is recombinant DNA. Three, the plasmid with the added genes is then put back into the bacteria cells. Four, the recombined cells are allowed to reproduce a large number of cells using mitosis, because you're bacteria. So what are transgenic organisms? Organisms with genes from other species. What is cloning? Creating a genetically identical organisms. What list of steps of cloning? One, the egg cell is taken from the female and has 
each nucleus with its DNA removed. Two, the donor DNA is taken from the animal that is to be cloned. Three, the nucleus from the clone is put into the egg cell from the donor. Four, the new cell is allowed to divide mitotically, forming an embryo. Five, the embryo is implemented into the foster mother's uterus where it continues to grow and develop. So you take one person's DNA, put that into the egg of another's, put that back into the mother's. Yeah, uh, it's, it's better to listen to the steps. <laughs> so why was the Human Genome Project done? To determine the location of all the genes in a human and to sequence or find the order of all the bases of all the base pairs of human chromosomes. What are the uses of DNA profiling, fingerprinting, and gel electrophoresis, which are the same thing? So what do you use DNA fingerprinting for? To determine heredity, paternity lawsuits, and criminology. What are the steps, sorry, name the steps of DNA profiling? One, cut the DNA leaving behind blunt ends using the restrictive enzymes. Two, put the DNA figments into the hole in the gel. Three, Turn on the power and separate the DNA fragments according to size using gel electrophoresis. Four, smaller fragments travel further than larger ones. Five, use radioactive probes to label the DNA on the gel. What is a biochemical evolution, sorry, what is biochemical evolution, AKA organic evolution? So it's a gradual change that occurs to a population of organisms over a long period of time. How old is the Earth? 4.5 billion years old. When did Darwin develop his theory? Well, he was a naturalist on the HMS Beagle from 1831 to 1836. What did Darwin notice on his travels? That the characteristics of many organisms were remarkably well suited to whatever their environment that was that they inhabited. So if it's a cold place, you have fur. If it's a warm place, you don't. So what three groups of animals was Darwin most interested in the variations of? So he was interested in tortoises and their shell shapes, finches and their beak shapes, and giant fossil armadillos, because they were cool and big. To describe religious theory. All organisms were created by a supreme being, and all organisms were always this way, and they will always be this way. So yeah, 6,000 years, baby. Woo. Okay, so what two theories did Lamarck make? The theory of use and disuse, and transmission of characteristics. Describe the theory of use and disuse. The more a structure is used, the larger or better it would become. Describe the transmission of characteristics. So any trait that an organism developed during its lifetime would be passed on to its offspring. Like if I work out and I get a ton of muscles, then my kids would automatically have a ton of muscles. That's not how it works though. Lamarck is wrong, you should know that. Who disproves Lamarck's theory? Wes Westman. How did Westman disapprove, disprove Lamarck's theory. So he cut off the tails of mice and allowed them to reproduce, and the offspring still had tails. So you'd think, cut off someone's tail, their kids would not have tails. But the kids did have tails, which means that you don't get those characteristics from your parents. So what is a theory? Now this is something that a lot of people get wrong when they're discussing evolution. So what's a theory? A theory in science is a broad explanation that connects many scientifically tested hypotheses and observations, and is a well-documented scientific concept. So yes, evolution is just a theory, but a theory is more than you think. Like some examples are gravity, cell theory, stuff like that. It's not just some guy thinking, oh, this is my theory. Yeah, you have to actually get it tested and proved. What are variations? Differences that exist between individuals and a population due to mutations and sexual reproduction. Describe natural, natural selection. So since there are variations in all living things, the environment selects which traits are best suited to the individuals within a population. What are the five points of Darwin's theory? One, population growth, uh, struggle for an existence, survival of the fittest, reproduction, and speciation. Describe the principle of population growth. Individuals tend to produce more offspring than they can Individuals tend to produce more offspring than can survive in a particular environment. Describe struggle for existence. Because there are a large number of individuals, competition exists. Indif sorry, de describe the survival of the fittest. Individuals with adaptions to their environment will survive. What did Darwin refer to as survival? Sorry, what did Darwin refer to survival of the fittest as? 
natural selection. Describe um, how natural selection influences reproduction. Those individuals that have adaptions will survive and will be the ones that can reproduce and pass on their beneficial traits to their offspring. So if you don't have the good adaptions, no one will want to mate with you and then your kids, you're not going to have any kids. So the ones with the best adaptions, those are the ones that are going to get to reproduce and that's how we get a better, quote unquote, better species. So it describes speciation. As variations accumulate over many generations, enough differences will be present in the population that new species now exists. Describe modern theory. So modern theory combines Darwin's ideas and current knowledge about DNA as a mechanism that chain that causes variations to exist within a population. So they took Darwin's stuff, combined it with what we know about DNA now. So what are the three types of adaptions? Structural, psychological, and behavioral. What are some examples of structural adaptions? Webbed feet, long necks in giraffes, for example, and thorns. What are some examples of psychological adaptions? Um, venom, webs, and pheromones. What are some examples of behavioral adaptions? Migration, courtship dis displays, and fawn freezing, etc. So what are some benefits of adaptions? So camouflage, warning coloration, and mimicry. What is some direct evidence of evolution? One, comparing fossils show that life on Earth has changed over time. Two, geologic time scale shows the Earth and life's history and that it has changed. So what are three types of fossils? One would be fossilized bones, teeth, shells, rock, or tar. Two, whole organisms preserved in amber or ice. And three, impr imprints of leaves, footprints, etc. So just the way that we're walking right now with our shoes, those footprints will be fossils someday. What are the mo where are most fossils found? and sedimentary rock. How can you tell which fossils in the rock are older? They are at the bottom. So the older it is, the lower, the deeper it is on the ground. That means that there's been more time for stuff to get over it. You should remember that from your science too. So where did terrestrial animals used to live? In water. How long has evolution taken so far? Thousands or millions of years. Most species that have existed on Earth are now extinct. What are mass extinctions? Relatively short geologic time periods in which lots of organisms die off. What are some causes of mass extinctions? Meteor or, or comet striking earth, ice ages, and human impact, which has some, some things that are going on with animals now, like save the whales and stuff. So what are some examples of indirect evidence of evolution? So one, Comparative anatomy shows similarities within related species, which kind of implies that we came from a similar one. So two, comparative embryology shows that related organisms go through similar stages. Three, comparative biochemistry shows that all organisms t make up, are made up of the same chemicals. So we're all made of the same stuff, basically. So four, comparative cytology shows that cells are pretty similar with everyone, even Plant cells are not that different from animal cells when you compare them. So we're we kind of all we all come from cells. That means we kind of could have come from some some of the same thing. I don't know. So what are homologous structures? Parts that are similar structurally but have different functions. What are some examples of homologous structures? The wing of a butterfly and the front leg of an elephant. What do homologous structures indicate? that related organisms have a common ancestry. What are analogous structures? Parts that are different structurally but have similar functions. What are some examples of analogous structures? Wing of a bird and wing of a fly. Do analogous, sorry, what do analogous structures indicate? That similar environmental pressures result in similar structures. What are vestigial structures? Structures that exist in organisms but don't serve any function. What are some examples of vestigial structures? Human appendix and the hip bone and whale. So what do vestigial structures indicate? That there was a common ancestor in all of us. Describe what comparative embryology shows us. Related organisms show similar stages in developmental to each other. 
So what is one example of comparative embryology showing similarities? The human embryo is pretty similar to the chick embryo. What does comparative embryology indicate? That common ancestors exist. What does comparative embryology show us? Sorry, what does comparative biochemistry show us? All organisms are made up of the same chemicals. The more closely related two organisms are to each other, the more similar their biochemistry. What does comparative bi biochemistry indicate? Common ancestry exists among all organisms. What does comparative cytology show us? All animal cells organelles are mostly the same as plant cell organelles. What does comparative cytology indicate? That all living things are related. What is the goal of evolution? Trick question, there is none. Evolution doesn't have a set direction or goal. Organisms do not evolve to become better, which I think I've accidentally said like 50 times, but no, it doesn't technically become better. They're just becoming closer to, they just be, get more suited to their environment, not necessarily better, and a lot of them die out because they don't become closer to their environment. So what shaped curve are traits in a population usually on a graph? A bell-shaped curve. So describe directional selection. Selects for one extreme. Describe disruptive selection. Selects for both extremes. Describe stabilizing selection. Selects for the middle of the curve. What is speciation? The formation of a new species. Describe geographic isolation. Two populations are separated by a geographic barrier so that they can no longer breed together. Natural selection works separately on each group, leading to two distinct subspecies. <sighs> Describe reproductive isolation. The courtship strategies become so different that they cannot interbreed. What is gradualism? Hypothesis that all organisms evolve at a slow, continuous rate by building mutations slowly over time. Picture gradualism. I'll show you one better. Yeah, slowly mutating. What is punctuated equilibrium? Hypothesis that all organisms evolve rapidly in short periods of time of significant change, interrupted by long periods of time of no change. Picture punctuated equilibrium. List all the hypotheses about how life began on Earth. One, divine creation. Two, extraterrestrial hypothesis. Three, scientific hypothesis. So, or the heterotop hypothesis, sorry. So describe the divine creation hypothesis. God made everything, and this is not scientifically testable. Describe the extraterrestrial hypothesis. One, a comet or a meteor brought necessary materials to stored life, start life, to start life. Two, some biomolecules have been formed on objects from outer space. Three, it's pretty difficult to prove this, possibly impossible, because we can't go back in time and we can't go to everyone in space that we need to go. So describe the heterotroph hypothesis. So a, bio a biogenesis occurred, non-living materials generated the first life forms, and uh, gaps and uncertainties exist in these hypotheses. So what did Aristotle believe? He believed in spontaneous generation. So that's when living things, they come from non-living things, which kind of seems like the first one we were talking about, but anyway. So spontaneous generation say, this rat came from a pencil. Basically that. He wasn't right, obviously. So what did Francisco Reddy accomplish? He disproved spontaneous generation in non-microscopic organisms. What did von Leeuwenhoek accomplish? So he discovered microscopic life in pond water. What did Louis Pasteur accomplish? He disproved microscopic spontaneous generation by using long neck curved flasks. What do modern scientists do to study the history of life on Earth? So laboratory simulations, fossils, radioactive dating, geologic patterns, and biochemical analysis. What were the first cells like? So since there was no oxygen, they were anaerobic heterotrophs that consumed biomolecules. So that's a heterotroph hypothesis, basically. Um, describe the heterotroph hypothesis. The first cells took in nutrients from the ocean and generated more carbon dioxide by, an, by anaerobic respiration. Photosynthet photosynthetic organisms then evolved to 
um, to create CO2 from the heterotrophs and sunlight. Photosynthetic organisms generated oxygen, and oxygen allowed anaerobic organisms to evolve. And there's a lot of gaps in that. So, why do scientists use a classification system? To name organisms and graph them in a logical manner. What is taxometry? The science of classifying things based on physical and chemical similarities. Name the levels of Linnaeus' hierarchical system of classification from largest to smallest. Kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, genius, and species. Name the classification of humans from largest to smallest. Animalia, chordata, mammalia, primata, hominidae, and homo sapien. Describe the scientific way to name organisms. So it's called binomial nomenclature. And all, and you call organisms by their genus and species. So our genus is Homo, and our species is Sapien. So we're Homo sapiens. Name the five kingdoms: Monorans, uh, which is bacteria, protists, fungi, plants, and animals. Name the three domains: um, Archaea, which is Archaeobacteria, Eubacteria, which is true bacteria, and Eukarya, which is protists, fungi, plants, and animals. What is a dichotomous key? A two-choice system of identifying organisms. What is a virus composed of? A protein coat surrounding a nucleic acid core. So it surrounds the DNA and RNA. Are viruses considered living or non-living? They're non-living because they do not carry out all the life processes and they're not made out of cells, technically. So describe the life, quote unquote, cycle of a virus. So a virus finds a receptor site on a cell membrane. It injects nucleic acid into the cell. The virus takes control over the cell processes. The cell makes more viruses. The cell bursts, and new viruses go into the receptor site of the new cells. What are some examples of viruses? Colds, influenza, HIV, hepatitis, herpes, and smallpox. What are vaccines? Weak or non-functioning pieces of a virus that prepare your immune system to fight off the actual virus. And you should remember that antibiotics do not work, obviously, against viruses, so you should really get vaccinated. What is a viroid? A virus without, sorry, a virus with only small pieces of DNA. What is a prion? A virus with small pieces of DNA only. I'm not sure if I got that. Oh, with of protein only. Sorry, protein only. So, what are some examples of prions? Mad cow disease, chronic wasting disease, and deer. So, what are the characteristics of bacteria? So, prokaryotic, they're round, rod, or spin or spiral shape, and they can cause disease or they can be helpful. Describe how bacteria perform movement. So, they're passive, and some use their flagellum, which is like a little tail. So, describe how bacteria can perform transportation. So, it uses cyclosis, which is movement of the cytoplasm. Describe how bacteria perform nutrition. Some are autotrophic, like kinobacteria. Some are heterotrophic or parasitic, and some are chemotrophic. How do E. coli perform excretion and respiration? They use diffusion. How do bacteria reproduce? Binary fission, which is asexual. Describe protists. They are eukaryotic, unicellular, multicellular, or colonial, and they are known as the misfit kingdom because they're kind of everywhere. What are animal like protists called? Protozoans. What are some examples of protozoans? Amoeba, which use pseudopods, paramecium, which use cilia, and plasmodonium, which cause malaria. What are some examples of plant like protists? Algae and euglena. What is an example of a fungus-like protist? Slime molds. Describe movement of protists. So it's passive with cilia in paramecium, flagella in euglena, and pseudopods in amoeba. How do protists transport? So say closest. Describe how protists perform nutrition. Some are autotrophic with algae, heterotrophic with amoeba and paramecium, are both with the euglena. How do protists perform excretion and respiration? They do diffusion. How do protists perform reproduction? So, so they do binary fission, which is asexual, 
or they do conjugation, which is paramecium, and that's sexual. Think about that. So describe the characteristics of fungi. So they're eukaryotic, their cell walls are made of chitin, multicellular, and heterotrophic decomposers. How do fungi perform the transpiration? Cyclosis. Um, transportation, sorry. Yeah, transport. So describe how fungi perform nutrition. So they're mostly decomposers and they use extracellular digestion, which means they secrete enzymes into the food source and those nutrients are absorbed into the cells. So they're heterotrophic decomposers, you need to know. How do fungi reproduce? They produce spores. Describe two symbiotic relationships involving fungi. There, so there's mycorrhizae, which is fungi and plant, and plant roots, and there's lichen, which is fungi and photosynthetic protists. Describe the characteristics of plants. So they are eukaryotic. They have cell walls that are made of cellulose. They're multicellular with cell specialization. They're autotrophic. How do plants perform transport? So they use the xylem and the phloem. How do plants use the xylem? So water enters through the roots and it is transported upwards in the stem. Describe the phloem. So it's a tube that transports sugars made in the leaf to the rest of the plant. How do plants excrete? So they excrete CO2 and water from cellular respiration and CO2 and water vapor from photosynthesis and from photosynthesis and exits through the stomata. So CO2, water, stomata. That's how it gets out. So how do plants reproduce? So they do asexually through vegetative propagation and sexually using flowers. Name and describe two structures in flowers involved in sexual reproduction. So the stamen, which produces pollen, and, aka the sperm, and the pistil, which produces seeds and fruit, aka the ovary. And what are tropisms? Growth responses to stimuli that cause plants to bend a certain direction. What, what is a phototropism? Phototropism. That's response to light. What is geotropism? Response to stimuli. Response to stimuli. Response to gravity. I'm gonna change that. What is hydrotropism? Response to water. What is thigmotropism? Response to touch. What are the characteristics of the animal kingdom? Multicellular, eukaryotic, heterotrophic, and the cells lack cell walls. What are invertebrates? Animals without a backbone. What are vertebrates? Animals with backbones. What is cell specialization? Cells perform different tasks. What are the three germ layers? Endoderm, which is your inside gut. Um, mesoderm, which is your muscles, bones, and organs. And ectoderm, which is your skin and nervous system. Describe radial symmetry. It's a round pattern and it's slow. An example of this would be the snail. It's pretty slow. Describe bilateral bi, bilateral symmetry so that's um, one line of symmetry and it's your front to your rear end and it's faster usually so what is um cephalization so that's the development of a head brain and sense organs what is a body cavity formation so that's development of space between your gut and your outer area of the body which allows for a better movement and specialization so describe, um, describe movement in animals. So all of them are modal at some point in their lives. And describe how animals regulate themselves. So it depends on the complexity. The nervous system is your brain and nerve cells and tissues. And the endocrine system regulates the release of hormones. So I hope that helps. And, as, uh, and I'm going to be making more videos like this once... We get to the next topics once we finish with the body systems, and I'm going to be making some too with history. So I hope this helps you study, and I am.